Hey, how are you going? I'm going well. I've just found um, these things from storage. What's that? That you with my Tommy. That's really cool. If it wasn't for that GP, during that birth, I'd be dead, and, and so would my daughter. It's as simple as, as that. What about your um, scar? How's it going? I haven't seen it for ages. Can I have a look? <laughs> yeah. Show you. I was hemorrhaging, and they didn't, hadn't had a heartbeat for my baby for 20 minutes. Maria Cotter says it was her local GP who realised Elian's oxygen supply had been blocked and pushed for an immediate emergency caesarean. I'm astonished actually at how well and capable my young daughter is, given that she was born not breathing. For decades, she's been a regular patient at her local GP practice in Armadale in New South Wales. But now, the doctors who own the practice have sold up and moved to the coastal community of Lake Macquarie. Basically, we've left because of, of personal reasons and potential health issues. Dr Marie Puxty and her husband, who is also a GP at the practice, are the latest in an exodus of experienced GPs from Armadale. About eight doctors have um, either retired or relocated all at the same time. Um, and that's left somewhere up to about 6,000 patients without a GP in a, a population of 25,000, so a significant percentage. Dr Puxty's former practice is now owned by Charity Healthy Communities Foundation, which says it's urgently trying to recruit staff. Patients can come to the practice and they can be consulted by a doctor um, by video conference and um, we have a doctor coming in uh, two days a month um, to provide on-site support. It's not ideal. I'm, I'm not going to suggest to anybody that that's the best model. We're quite concerned for people who have um, chronic disease, um, people who are financially vulnerable, um, people who um, struggle with um, IT, so are not going to be suitable for telehealth. Across the country, regional and rural towns are finding it harder than ever to get doctors, with a predicted shortage of over 11,000 GPs over the next decade. We are concerned that you know GP shortages are becoming the norm, um, not the exception. In New South Wales, the group representing rural doctors reports 70% of medical practices are actively seeking staff, while 40% of GPs in rural areas say they plan to leave within the next five years. It's no longer just small towns that are affected, that it's expanding to larger regional centres. Um, and that's concerning. Um, if you are struggling to find doctors in Armidale, then you're going to struggle even more the further west you go. Armidale GP Dr Vicky Howell says it's becoming harder and harder to recruit doctors to work in regional communities. It can be quite lucrative for a young doctor, maybe three or four years out of university, a graduate of medical school, to go and do some locum shifts. These locum rates are exceedingly high amounts of money and general practice cannot compete. Last month at a community forum in Armadale, concerned residents gathered to demand government intervention to attract more doctors. When our mob goes to the hospital, they get scared because there's not enough doctors. I've never seen it worse to think that Armadale, I never thought I'd see the day that Armadale had this problem. Some doctors are now backing a radical change to the way GPs are employed, hired directly by the state and run through the hospital system. All right, well, those in favour? OK. Those against? OK, that's, that one's unanimous then. The single employer model is one new model uh, which could offer um, a really great bridge for young graduate doctors to move across from employment in the state hospital system and moving over into community general practice. 
they can maintain their entitlements, they can train in one region without having to relocate themselves and their family. But not all in the rural health sector agree it's the right strategy. I think we need to be very careful to understand what it means and what the long-term implications are. Robbing one town to support another town is not a solution, it's simply shifting the problem. It's shifting the deck chairs on the Titanic. New South Wales is already trialling the single employer model in the Murrumbidgee region and the federal government has approved another trial in Tasmania. Nationals MP Adam Marshall, who represents Armadale in state parliament, publicly announced his electorate had been approved for the next trial. But both the state and federal governments have disputed that announcement, saying the next pilot sites for the model are still being negotiated. The New South Wales government says it wants the entire state to be approved for the program, not just Armadale. We're ready to go. We know it works. We've trialled it. This needs to be rolled out right across the regions, and that's what I'm saying to the federal government. Allow us to do that. GPs say more programs need to be funded to ensure students from rural backgrounds study and train in rural areas. We need to take kids from rural and remote towns. We need to educate them in rural and regional areas. We need to train them in general practice in rural and remote communities. And we know the evidence says those kids will go and work in rural towns. Eliane Cotter is hoping to do just that. Next year I'm going to the University of Queensland to study biomedical science um, as a pathway into medicine. <laughs> I'm really passionate about being a doctor and being a rural doctor especially. Okay, would you like to come through with me? Sure. For her mum, solutions can't come soon enough. Today I'm having a preventative mammogram. Very well done. <laughs> what I've realised is that if something is, is um, to go awry, I wouldn't have Dr Pugsty or, or, or the medical staff there that, that know me to help me deal with such a, a big issue. I'm vulnerable and um, I'm not the only one.